Neil Cross with Robert Pyman for this afternoon's match. And as usual, Rob, a lot of old diggers around the place this afternoon. Oh, it was fantastic to uh, drive in here today and see all the old diggers with their medals on their, their shirts, proudly wearing them. It was just a, a fantastic day on this most important day in Australian history. And this year, it's a significant in terms of Australia's involvement in the Vietnam War. It's the 40th anniversary of the Battle of Long Tan, which was fought in the former South Vietnam in August 1966. A lot of those veterans involved here this afternoon. And it really is a day that gets the blood pumping. Oh, it certainly is. And it's a day that we, uh, we thank the, the servicemen and women of Australia who have served for it. You see they're going around a lot of ex-footballers, or rather ex-military men, footballers, going around there this afternoon, including uh, Grantley Pays, who's somewhere out there as well, the brother of the SANFL president, Rod Pays, and from all clubs involved in this this afternoon as well, which is great to see, and it's fantastic that the SANFL can honour our military men and women. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, when they went around, there was a huge cheer from the crowd. It was, uh, it was fantastic to see the appreciation being shown. Keith Perida, part of the afternoon as well, Keith Perot, I should say, is a part of the afternoon as well, and is actually carrying the match ball down with him, so he's a pretty essential part of this afternoon as well. Didn't he do a good job with that landing? Spot on the target there. He, uh, he didn't miss a beat, did he? He was fantastic, and he came in. And at halftime, you might see on the left of his head there the old mini cam, and I can tell you at halftime, we will have a look on his point of view. Here's the match ball, so it's good that he did remember that when he jumped out of the plane. Centrals with Nathan Steinburner leading the side for the first time this season, for the first time ever as captain of the Central District Football Club underwent a shoulder reconstruction in the off-season. Gee, they're a top line-up, the dogs, aren't they? They've won the past three flags, but they're coming off their biggest loss since 1992, a loss to Glenelg by 95 points here at the Adelaide Oval. The Eagles, well, they've lost four of their past six grand finals to the dogs, but they won the Anzac Day 2005 flash by 74 points. So you would think they would take some spirit and some fight into this afternoon's match, no doubt about that. It's a big afternoon, as we said. Nice crowd, halftime. We'll have the 2005 grand final highlights. Stay tuned, of course, if you're a Dogs fan. But, Robbie, I imagine this afternoon for the Eagles will be all about this season and getting their game on track. Oh, there's no doubt about that. I don't think they'll be reflecting too much on the uh, the previous encounters. I reckon that uh, both teams have got uh, new lists. We can see the... Uh, the trophy is, here. There is silverware up for grabs. Yes, there's no, <laughs> no doubt about that. There's always on, on big occasions silverware up for grabs, and I'm sure the Eagles will be trying to make amends from last year's grand final. Well, if we look at the round so far, North over Sturt. Look, everybody is saying the Roosters decide to beat this year. 92 points that match on Friday night. Nick Gill, a standout with nine goals. On Saturday afternoon, we saw Poet beat your Panthers by 43 points. Snored defeating West by 23 and of course this afternoon yet to come the Central's Eagles match and Sodas and Benny Knights are with us this afternoon down on the boundary line enjoying the atmosphere. Well thanks Neil uh, let's look at Central Districts first now the big question for them today is where will their goals come from they've got two key forwards out Daniel Shell although named in the squad didn't take his place his back's still a problem but the club has assured me he will play on Saturday night against West Adelaide out at uh, Elizabeth in that night game. The other problem, of course, Luke Cowan. If you remember back to last week's game, he spent a lot of the game on the bench, groin and back problems. So that's a big issue for them. But they are boosted by the return of Nathan Steinburner, as Neil mentioned before, led the side out for the first time as captain. He's back for his first game of the year after a shoulder reconstruction in summer. The other player, Luke McCabe, he's back. He was a late withdrawal last week, also with a shoulder. Now, last week as well, the Bulldogs, they were terrible against Glenelg, and they've had 10 days to get over that performance. Oh, we've had a good look at the tape. We've done some pretty hard training, so I reckon we're ready. Now, uh, lots of interpretations and rule changes with the umpires this year. Central, no doubt, the best side at legitimately and legally holding up sides when they're in possession in the past. Has this affected and changed the way you're playing this year? It certainly has affected. Look, our stats at the moment show we've given a lot away. A lot of free kicks. We'll look to address that today by being a bit more disciplined and um, accountable to the rules. Well, the Eagles this week... Coming off a two-point win over Norwood last week, their first win for the season, have had to make a host of changes, none bigger than last week's best on ground, Bernie Vince, who the Crows have actually said to Ron Fuller today will not play, and so you'd think he might be getting a call-up to the Crows next week. As well as that, Floriani, Fiacci, Simons all out with injury. Roberts has been omitted. I spoke to Ron Fuller and said, how important was that win last week to get the season off and running? Oh, it's always important, Ben, to start the season with 
a, a win at some stage, so it was very important. I, I think more about us uh, being able to, to find a way to win. We'd been in a position to win in the previous two games, we couldn't go on with the game. And uh, getting back in the game last week and then going on and winning, I think, has uh, secured a bit of confidence for us. And against Centrals today, uh, what can we look forward to and uh, what is it that's going to hopefully turn around what happened in the grand final last year? Um, I think most games are won uh, around the restart, your midfield and how fluently you can move the ball forward and that's what we'll be trying to do. Yes, interesting afternoon for Ronnie Fuller and his boys. Interesting afternoon for Centrals as well. It will be a vital contest. The toss here, Sodas. No, he's not quite ready apparently for the toss, but... What do you think of this match in terms of the Eagles and Centrals and the desperation they'll have this season because they haven't started well, both sides? No, both sides haven't started well. There's no doubt about that. I think they, they would be uh, reflecting on what's ahead of them right at this immediate point in time in this game as compared to reflecting on previous encounters. They've been two of the old uh, stages, I suppose, over the last 10 years of the competition. It's been a real arm wrestle between who's had bragging rights and uh, Centrals have probably had it so far. Yes, they certainly have as we look across the magnificent Adelaide Oval and we get a look at the head-to-head -head statistics over the years. I don't know how much history tells you, really. The record of the Adelaide Oval, though, says that Woodville West Torrens have won three and Central District two. So that's, that's the record. And you would think that this is a 50-50 match and you would look at it and say, well, anybody can win. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And you have a look at the teams. Uh, I'm sure that we'll, we'll get a, a close look at them when we know the exact ins and outs and who's on the bench. But they're, they're completely different teams from last year's grand final. So you, you can't look too much uh, or too, too far back and, and have a look at history because I think it's quite irrelevant. Well, we'll see if it is. It'll it'll unfold before us very soon. We're going out to the middle of the ground now. Mark Soderstrom has taken up position. We are out here in the centre just getting ready for the coin toss. Of course, we've got Gav Colville, the captain of the Eagles, getting ready. We're just about to get Nathan Steinburner to come over and toss the coin for the first time in his career as the, the number one man, the captain. And tossing the coin, of course, we've got Chris Kutchenmeister, who was an army machine gunner in the Assault Pioneer Platoon of 5 Battalion back in 1966 and 67 in Vietnam. So Chris will uh, just get ready there to toss the coin. We've got this special five dollar golden coin so uh chris when you're ready you go for it gavin Colville calling here chris is just about throwing it out the ground we've got that and it is it's heads nathan steinburn has won the toss and central districts are going to head to the don bradman end no real win to speak of now timmy pfeiffer this is the biggest stage for the sanfl outside of finals you excited absolutely this is a, just a fantastic day a day that we can remember the, the people that fought for us but also to put on a great footy show for the uh, for the rest of the public that come in now timmy uh some changes in the rules and interpretations this year we've seen in the afl and the sanfl just um can you clarify for us there has been some conjecture about holding up a player after they get possession. We've seen lots of 25s and 50s. How does that rule actually get interpreted? Well, basically, if uh, a player's taken a mark, another player that's not in a marking contest comes in and claims him um, and delays the play, then we're going to pay a 25. It's pretty, pretty straightforward that uh, if they take a mark, you're not in the contest, just can't touch them. Well, it's straightforward for you as an umpire. I'm not sure if the crowd find it straightforward. Good luck today. Thanks, Mark. Thanks to uh, Mark Soderstrom and to Timmy Pfeiffer there. Very experienced umpire at both SNFL and AFL level. We're just about to start the formal ceremonies before the match this afternoon. As you can see, the two teams are lined up and we'll go through, of course, the Ode, the last post, the Australian National Anthem. And here we go.
they shall go not old, as we that are left go old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years shall be condemned. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. have the national anthem with the Australian Army Band from Adelaide led by Captain Glenn Rogers. the country in the last few days we must have heard the minute silence or as much as you hear silence but the ode and the national anthem and it never fails to ignite you does it? it it really gets you going and there is a tingle up your spine as you look at the central district lineup and there are a lot of names missing from that team last year six premiership players for a start yeah there's no doubt about that i think the uh, the forward line is is probably not as potent when it doesn't have the name of Shell in there and uh, it's going to be interesting to see who uh, who actually takes up the slack in that area they've got Mackenzie lined up there at full forward Graham's going to be a very important player for him a centre half forward and through the Eagles lineup, and again a lot of changes a lot of turnovers in the off season no doubt about that they've had their injury concerns at the start of the year I suppose the the interesting thing is to see if um, Big Lindsay can ruck all day. I mean, he's averaging something like 35 hit-outs a game, and that's due to the fact that he's playing a, a hell of a lot more football on the ball, obviously, in, in light of the fact that O'Hara has moved to North Adelaide. Well, what's the key for you as we look at those lineups? What's what's the key in terms of is it is it trying to find a key forward for both sides? I think so. I think that the key forwards, if one of those can actually grab hold of the game that, and kick a few goals, there's no doubt about that. It'll help because both of the midfields are, are pretty even. Obviously, the uh, you know the midfield of centrals has, has taken a couple of hits with some of the experienced players that have left the club, but uh, there's no doubt they've still got the, the young players that are up and coming and still very good caliber of player that could uh, take up the slack. We're not used to this, aren't we? I mean, this season centrals in seventh. One win, two losses to start the season, and Woodville West Torrens just ahead of them in sixth position with one win and two losses coming into this round. It's just, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, do, do also remember that Central's last year did start a little slow. You'd have to um, bring that up, would you? Yeah. <laughs> just to prove us wrong. Well, they did start a little slow, but um, certainly from about this point on for the year, they um, they really picked it up. And, and obviously, uh, this will be the game that they'll try to kick this kickstart their season. Well, Central's breaking, as we know, they won the toss. Mark Soderstrom, what does that mean in terms of the weather conditions? Well, there's no breeze to speak of, Neil, so no advantage there by Nathan Steinburner winning the toss. Temperature's great. It's uh, going to be up to about 23 today. It's around about 20 at the moment. It's pretty, uh, pretty warm, so the players will find the going a little tough as the game does go on. But look, conditions are sensational. It's a special day, of course, Anzac Day. Everyone's pumped up. Just to hear the crowd get into it, just as the national anthem ends, is sensational. So uh, we look forward to a massive game. And here's Michael Maney with the start. 
Certainly will be a massive game. Mark Soderstrom will control the boundary line with Ben Knights this afternoon. Umpires Filler, Pfeiffer and Ralston in charge of this special day in SNFL football. Very happy to be here. The Eagles made some late changes from the selected side. Peter Fiachi, Bernie Vince, Dale Simmons, Daniel Roberts are out. Vandeleur and Jackman will come into it. There's Mark McKenzie who is just so important for the Eagles. Saw him flattened last week and come back on the ground. Jason Buckets McKenzie. And there's a bit of a box on. In the forward 50 for the Eagles. Mark Passador involved in that. Just a bit of bumping. Away in the round four Anzac Day clash at the Adelaide Oval. Centrals and the Eagles. And a free kick has been paid from that scuffle. Robert Pyman, you were watching it all the way. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The, the, the umpire was about three metres away and there's a bit of pushing and shoving and uh, Graham probably uh, just threw a little jumper punch there or, or pushed a little bit too high and uh, got Passable in the throat. Passable's head went back and the umpire had no hesitation in playing a free kick. But Toey in his 100th game for the Dogs, Quentin Graham, which lets Mark Passador in to kick from 30 metres out directly in front and he's missed. And Wilson lets him know all about it. As too were many of the Central's defenders. That is a poor miss. There it is there, you can see a bit of pushing and shoving. Quentin Graham comes in here, just a little push to the throat area. Missed opportunity, obviously, from Passive or straight in front, 30 metres out. Steinburner, his first kick as captain. Off half back, and he's hurt his shoulder straight away. That's bad news for Centrals. We'll come back to that in a minute. Colville at the back for the Eagles. Goes wide to Powell. He was best on ground in last year's match. And Nathan Steinburner is really struggling around half back for Centrals at the moment. You see him there in the box running around. The Eagles with control of the football at half forward. And as Rob Pyman mentioned at the start, the key will be which side can find a key forward. And just at the moment, that's the Eagles' problem. They just couldn't get a clean break. Finally, Powell with the long kick for the minor score. Yeah, there's no doubt a uh, good call there, Neil uh, Steinborn. It looked to me look like he he may well have just popped his shoulder a little bit because you saw him just try to push push it back in after he kicked that ball there. You can see him grab hold of it and grimace. It looks like he's okay at the moment. He's in the hands of the trainer that's talking to him, but may well have just popped out and uh, popped back in. I think he's done that before in that he hasn't taken a bump for it to come out. He's just been running. And I think he was close to the boundary line of Footy Park on one occasion. I don't know whether it was a final, but that is bad news for Steinburner if he has to come off. Wilson to the outer side to the run of Brooks, who kicks to the wing. Gowans can't take it. Steinburner, here's a test for the shoulder. Does it get through the test? Boys, watch it. Chris Gowans has kicked to off the hide. It's a good one. Off the hide. Kicks long. Up goes where? Can't take the mark. Well done by Jarrett. The kick to the wing. Bit of pace on with McKenzie. He's got to get around Sikalella. That'll be a task. Wobbly old ball is not the best, and Jarrett gets back and takes the relieving mark. And a lot of pace on early as they sort themselves out. Look, Jarrett. Reasonable last week, and they went over Norwood. Kicks to the wing. Big pack of players. Graham. Good thump away, just about cleans up our cameraman down on the boundary, right in front of the interchange. There's Quentin Graham, who gave away that free kick for Mark Passador to score the first score of the match. Michael, just a quick report. Uh, the runner from Central Districts has come off the ground. He's been over to Steinburner, and Steinburner said, I'm not coming off the ground, so he's determined to stay out there. Boundary throw in, and Westhoff got up. James Gowans feeds it to last year's Odie medalist in McCabe. McKenzie is outstanding across half-back to the Eagles and takes the relieving mark. Can play a few positions, Cardi McKenzie. Across the middle is how he made his name, and now in defence. Westbrook couldn't take the mark. And Sullivan back to McKenzie. Now off the high, just in short to Slade. Plenty of space in the middle of the ground. Down to half-forward he goes. Nice delivery. Ops with the mark. Looks up and call from school it was go long instead he goes inside short to McCabe looks up waits everybody's covered it's all one-on-one -on -one in there McCabe decides to drop it across for Wilson 
coming through as Treby knocked it away. Now Inkster couldn't take it. Wilson's taken down. will be holding the man. And Wilson will take the free kick for Central District. Interesting to note that uh, Sivanello to the centre, usually the full back on centre half back, has been pushed forward, playing centre half forward on McKenzie. Quinton Graham has gone to centre half back. Wilson drops it in short. And I guess that's somewhat of the dangerous Elijah Ware takes the mark. That if you do go one on one and you get a yard on your opponent, well, as a forward, you've got the chance to lead out like Elijah Ware did then. Dangerous player, Ware. He certainly uh, is at his injury concerns, but when he's on song, he can cut a team apart. His last year was ruined by a knee reconstruction after he injured it against Port Adelaide in round four. But he starts off round four this afternoon pretty well for Centrals. Plenty of space out in that pocket where he took the mark. You can see here Wilson, beautiful foot skills, plenty of space, had room to move, just fled slightly to the pocket. The, the right pocket for a right footer, if you know what I mean, because he opened up the angle and uh, beautiful player where. Let's go, Sotis, the Eagles bench. That's uh, nice to hear, and uh, yep, you can see the Eagles bench there with Jan James Vandalou, one of the two first game players here today, Dennis Redden also not starting the bench for the first game player. The other two on the bench, Matthew Jackman and Adam Spencer. You think you've dyed your hair, Ben? Out goes McCabe, can't get through. Umpires with the job ahead. We've already paid a controversial one to Mark Pasador, and he kicked the first score of the game. Westhoff got around, good tackle, Powell. Sikalala just uses Wiggly across half-back. Kicks out, looking for Treby, and he's got to wait for it to sit, and Steinburner comes in and forces Treby to knock it on. Good play, Nathan Steinburner. Let's go down to Mark. Yes, you found me at last, Michael. I can tell you, sitting on the bench for the Bulldogs. Kane Officer, Chad Norsworthy, and also Reese Francis, who made his debut last week, and probably a game to forget for him from a team point of view, no doubt. No one willing to go for that one. Wiggly to Jared. Eagles build. Touched off the boot. Kicked off the ground by Graham. O'Sullivan got it back to Wilson, who was under enormous pressure. O'Sullivan has got Gowans. He needs to use him very close to the line. Ran out of room on the outer side. Boundary throw in. Hasn't reached any great height yet. Robert? No, both teams are just fe feeling each other out at the moment and just uh, having a look at the way they're setting up. Centrals are getting a loose man in defence, which is obviously allowing the Eagles to do the same. So they find it pretty tough going when they're entering their forward 50s. O'Sullivan to James Gowans, who's got a bit of work to do. And the boundary line is your friend, if you're able to disguise it well enough. And I think James Gowans did OK there. One of the highlights of uh, both of these teams is, is certainly their pressure skills and their tackling. That's evident in the early stages of this game. Saw on camera the Gowans boys getting harassed and doing a lot of harassing as Jared. Nice mark, brave. Just went back. Now he's on his left foot. Inside 50 aims for Pasador. Backing up Pasador. Got the hands to the ball. Couldn't take the mark. Ball now loose. And Central's crowd in over it. Nothing clean coming out, almost, for Grokey. Now they go in again, and we'll get a ball up. Central's forced that 10, 15 metres away from their defensive goal. Good pressure. Good second and third efforts there from Grokey as a key forward for the Eagles. Ronnie Fuller would be happy with that. He's found a new lease of life since the uh, season or pre-season transfer from North Adelaide. Lovely swat from McKenzie. Found Steinburner off the west off. He wanted his left foot badly. Down to half forward. Over the back, McKenzie read it best in the centre of the ground. He has an option, but he can't get there. Colville instead takes the hand pass, goes down the line, looking for Lindsay. And from behind, McKenzie just knocks it out of bounds. And half back, right, for the Central District. It's in for a big afternoon, Lindsay. He's going to shoulder the vast majority of the ruck work. And uh, Centrals will know that. They'll try to run off him, try to expose him in that area. Lindsay last few years great partnership with o'hara but o'hara's gone to fred o'hara's gone to north adelaide so that's broken up that partnership and just quietly he's a big bloke you see that tackle when you run into lindsay you know, you know you've been hit don't you mckenzie flipped it out again nicely again westhoff will want his left side and feeds it back inside of thomas and a great tackle by treby 
Brilliant stuff by Treby. Now Shattuck in trouble, taken over the line by Thomas. And we'll get a ball in. And Shattuck, who played in a premiership in the AFL for Brisbane, certainly got a hit then. As we said before, the tackling skills of both these two teams is fantastic. And uh, two great tackles being put on straight in front of the commentary box. Man on a mission, Paul Thomas there. He wanted to get him to ground. Colville. High kick. Inkster's got a fly. He went a bit early. Didn't give away a free kick. Wigley. On the overlap is Treby. He's got plenty of pace. Treby kicks it long. Will it carry the pack? I think it did. Wonderful running goal by Lee Treby. And the Eagles get their first of the afternoon. They hit the lead by two points. What a running goal by Treby. He's a fantastic running play. You can see contest formed here by Inkster. Beautiful little hand pass to Treby. And just bought enough enough space there. Brokey getting in the way of the uh, the pressure coming from the Central's player. A beautiful kick, a beautiful left foot kick. Anywhere outside of 50, he's usually pretty uh, spot on with his accuracy. So he's gained a yard of pace too. Treby this season, maybe just a little bit fitter. So the Eagles by two points. Second lead change in the game already in the first 10 minutes. By Colin Ralston taking his time. Mackenzie straight across, put the arm out. Now, technically, I would have thought that's a free kick, but Potter doesn't mind. He gets it forward. Nicely trapped by Sicalella. Fed it inside to Westbrook. Westbrook from 45 away to the right. I think you're spot on there, Neil. It was a very good call. If the, if the Ruckman crosses the line like that and puts his arm out, it's uh, classified as a shepherd, but uh, didn't worry, Lindsay. He's still got his hands on the footy. The Eagles were able to make the clearance from the centre. And Westbrook, who kicked so accurately last week, booted four in their narrow win over Norwood. Just that easy one. Wigley just sped it out the back to last year's Quinn medalist in Powell. The kick's a beautiful one. Finds Shattuck. Umpire said you ran around. Now he's got a problem. They don't argue on McKay. Loose kick inside forward 50. Wilson working hard. Steinburner. Just to the feet of Thomas, a free kick off the footy. Advantage rule to be paid. Off to Hyde's got it the half back to McKenzie. McKenzie's got Slade on the wing. Ignores that as Powell. Just mans him up. Good game so far. Three points the difference. McKenzie goes in short and finds McCabe. A star in last year's grand final against the Eagles. Former Hawthorne player. Racked with shoulder injuries. Kicks to the line, and that's not his best kick. McKenzie, who does so well. Westbrook, short kicks. OK, and finds Grokey. Grokey gets a lead from Pasador. He sits, waits under it, and floating across is Oakley. Well, we saw him last week, Oakley. He reads the play and reads the ball well. And it was a lovely block in the end by Pasador. No doubt about that. He He's a, he's a beautiful um, classical footballer, I suppose, in just the fact that he can read the play, as you can see there. It's, uh, you know, he's usually an accurate kick, um, and he's, he's certainly found his uh, niche there in the Eagles side, playing up usually closer to home. Oakley. Eight goals, three for the season. Make that nine three. And the Eagles skip away to a nine-point lead. Good finish by Oakley. Just evident in that in that passage of play there when McCabe had the footy, he didn't want to go long to a contest, uh, he caused, which caused the turnover. You can see there in that passage of play, Pasador, beautiful block, put his arms up, pretended he was going for the mark, did everything right, just bought enough space for his teammate in Oakley to take a simple mark straight in front of goal. Be a problem or two for Central's on the bench. We'll go to Sodas in a moment. Ball back in the middle. And McKenzie can't get rid of it. And so does. Yeah, Scotty Dutsky, the youngster from Tanunda, got a crunch in his back there, a knee to the back, just on the wing about three or four minutes ago. He was tagging Gav Colville. So he's come off the ground. He's been assessed by the Central District doctor there. Kane Officer come on for his first run to replace him. Officer says, thank you very much. He's got Colville, who now has the ball. Brings it wide for Shattuck. Shattuck in space. Passador's on the lead. Shattuck looks inside. He ignores the lead until it's too late. And Brooks comes through. Passador tried to ship it. Westbrook jams it on the boot. Back to centre wing. 
could be taken by Potter. Now it can in terms of a tackle. Officer toe pokes it forward. Colville diving in. Still Officer over it. He got one high. Umpire will give the free kick to Kane Officer. Sibanela is forward. He decides to go long for Schooler. One out. He's not one out anymore. As you saw Timmy Inkster coming back bravely and knocking it out of bounds. I reckon Ronnie Fuller's just sent a message to uh, young Shattuck there in that situation to hit the ball long to the hot spot instead of trying to draw the player and get the ball over the top with a short little left foot pass. I reckon he'd be much more comfortable kicking the ball to the top of the square. Now Schooler gets his first crack at Lindsay, gets to the front. Powell couldn't take it. Sikalella tries to break the tackle. Potter got a hand pass out of sorts. That looked like high on Inkster. Umpire saw it. Inkster will take the free kick. He was on the merry-go-round there, and one of the Gowans boys just stuck out the arm and caught him high. Goes by hand to Potter, who drives it long towards centre wing. Steinburner just couldn't get to the front. Now he pressures Treby. Not enough. Treby gets the ball. Was aware he had a player tagging him, and so he just got it to the side. Westbrook Pettit. Nicely done to Wigley. Inside 50 with a long delivery. It comes to the front. Now Grokey with the snap. He's wide. What's the bounce like? No, minor score. The Eagles just seem to be inside at the moment at stoppages. They're winning their fair, fair share of uh, stoppage play, playing inside their opponents. So it'll be interesting to see if they address that centrals at quarter time. Interesting that Sivanala would pick up McKenzie. That just shows you the damaging play that McKenzie has off half-back. And they're still working at the moment. This is Wilson at half-back for the Doggies. McKay makes some space at centre half back. The Dogs, not too much on offer. Wears on his own on the wing, and Quentin Graham's even shorter. He goes to Graham. The Eagles just zoning at the moment. Graham's kick on the lead. Obst, I like him up forward. I think he's better up forward than down back. Alan Obst, he's got McCabe, and it's a 50 50 ball. And Grokey. Did well. Sikalala just sat it at the top of his head. Crunch comes Wilson. Not a good kick. In the middle. Westbrook tries to get through. O'Sullivan caught him high. A little bit undisciplined by O'Sullivan. The ball's got to come back. You can see the incident here. He's pretty much going to be caught holding the ball. He just got a clip around the back of the head there. And the umpire was only a couple of metres away. Had no hesitation in playing that. Hardly ruffled the hair, but it was there. Westbrook. Hoping for a mark. Shattuck! From the side. Had his name written over it. Good play here by Shattuck. Used his leg. You can see there, he put it in the buttock of the central's opponent. Just nudged him out of the way. He's a, he's a hard player to match up on, Shattuck, because he's a running player, but he's deceptively tall and can take a big mark, as we saw in that situation. Played mainly in defence, Aaron Shattuck, but revelling a run through the midfield and up forward. They could make good use of him. He'll kick from 30 metres out directly in front. Gun barrel straight from the former Brisbane Lion and power lifted player. And they're out to 16 points, the Eagles. Yeah, I think the, uh, the scoreboard's not really reflecting how much of the play the Eagles have got. You can see here, they had the ball in the corridor, bang to the hot spot, and a couple of players flying, Shattuck was good enough to get on the end of it. But they've had seven scoring shots to one at the moment, and um, I reckon if, um, if they get another one or two prior to uh, quarter time, I reckon that Roy Lee would be pretty disappointed in his charges in the first quarter. Well, of course, it's not a grand final, so it won't mean that much, but they certainly owe centrals, don't they? Oh, there's no doubt there's a lot of feeling between these two clubs. Four grand final losses to the Doggies. Sikalella out of the middle. Graham will come and punch from behind, and he doesn't get there. Nice mark taken by Oakley. And out to his right, he's got Powell in space for a long time, and that allowed Wilson to come across. Powell can't take the mark. It's his own ball at the front. Sikalella, clever. Just great composure from Sikalella. He had a little bit of space. He still had to kick over a central opponent, but he just controlled the kick. He didn't try to kick around the corner with the check side or anything like that, or, or the banana kick. He just used a very delicate drop punt and weighted the ball perfectly. Brokey lines up. Shattuck and a couple of Gowan's twins involved there. And I should say it's Treby, not 
Grokey and Treby kicks the minor score away. Just hooking it just slightly. Certainly within range, Treby, if he gets uh, within 60 metres, he's a thumping kick. Thomas with a long kick. Schooler, good lead, good kick. The 55-metre pass, McKay cuts through the centre of the Adelaide Oval and spears the kick forward. Target was oxed. Going to ground was officer. Will he get a free kick? The umpire says no, it's locked in underneath. Couldn't get it out. And a ball up. Michael, just before the game, we talked about Central Districts up forward. They're actually changing their ruckman out of full forward as opposed to off the bench, which they normally do. But it could prove some problems for the Eagles, Benny. Yeah, it certainly could, so that's right. The Eagles went in without Daniel Roberts today. And Daniel Roberts has been their backup ruckman for Paul Lindsay, so uh, yeah, it could certainly prove some trouble for the Eagles. Just as we edit time on, minus score there from Slade. Potter now with the ball. Just outside defensive 50 for the Eagles, taking his time. Finally drops it in short. McKenzie has to sit under it. Nice hands. Was under pressure. Again, one-on-one -on -one football. Goes for Oakley. Quentin Graham from the back. Oakley picks his own ball, puts the pressure on. Powell had players on this side, couldn't get it. Still in dispute, O'Sullivan taken down, lost control. And still they go, and they're inside the centre square, and Powell picked it up just briefly before he was pulled into the ruck as well. It's still going forward. And the last man down was Westbrook. So we'll get a ball up. I think that's good umpire, and the umpire was prepared to let it go. And still, the ball was still fumbling around in that contest. I guess that's the thing. The ball was moving, albeit it was inches at a time. Nicely done by Jared, broke away. Down the line with the left foot. Earl was clever, tapped it to Inkster. Inkster took control and then left it go and then took control with the free kick off the world. He passed it to Passador on the lead. And Passador has a reasonable tough assignment here, but nobody to kick it to as such. So the best he could do is have a crack at goal. I don't think his confidence would be sky high after missing that first one <laughs> straight, straight in front. Just a character, Mark Passador, though. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes back. There it is. Goal for the Eagles. Great start to this game. Yeah, don't look at me like that, Michael. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, goal up. Goal up by did not move, though. Beautiful left foot pass there. Once again, the Eagles forwards finding a bit of space. Mark Passador kicked straight through the ball. Goal up by didn't move. Beautiful kick. But in three goals, two last week, Mark Passador had five, six before this match. Remember, Michael, he started down at full back last week too, so uh, being used, like we said last week, Mr. Fix-It for the Eagles team. Good point, Ben Knights, on the boundary for us on ABC Television Football, along with Mark Soderstrom. O'Sullivan, out of the middle for the Dogs. In front, Jarrett. Couldn't take the mark. Good work by Treby. Been on top of his game so far. Colville, reasonably quiet, but he's effective. Powell has Shattuck. Shattuck has kicked a goal already in this match. Wobbly old kick off the boot, looking to pass it off. Why wouldn't you? Tracking him is Brooks. Brooks about to take it to the line. Did he keep it in? Well done, young man. Good work by Brooks. Let himself down with a handball. Don't give Mark Passador an opportunity. He kicks long, hoping for a Lindsay Mark. But good work by Wilson, who floats across. Took a lovely mark. Played on and just drew the man out to Quentin Graham, who's long key looking for and fighting Slade, who averages 26 possessions this season. Brooks has floated forward. He's about to get nailed. He kicks, and luckily it comes off to Officer. Officer just sits it up, hoping for a big buckets. McKenzie Mark, and he's got it. Well, McKenzie just <laughs> put a big hip and shoulder on there on Pedler when he was trying to uh, run for the footy. It was a fair way off the ball. I think he was quite in his rights. He just stood his ground. And uh, you get the ball to the top of the square when you've got blokes like Schuller and McKenzie. Well, at the very least, they're going to give you a contest. In this situation, he took a mark. Jason McKenzie from 20. I wasn't going to say... But it's a real gimme, and he's just got it through by looks of things. Jason McKenzie kicks his first, and a much needed one for the dogs. Certainly, as you can see there, he's put the uh, pretty much just stood his ground, but, but braced for it. 
Fiddler's asking the question for the umpire, but uh, probably, in my books, good use of the body. And uh, at the end of the day, he snuck it in there. <laughs> Aiming at the right hand post, he knows what he's doing. Kick the goal. It's interesting they're changing the ruckman as, um, as so to said, out of the uh, full forward line. Mackenzie did the first 20 minutes before they made that ruck change. The Eagles have got a couple of players standing on the wing from this centre bounce, which leaves Steinburner free in defence for the Dogs. No breakaway, so all elementary, really, I suppose. Or very technical. Stein is still by himself in defence. All down again. And Sullivan just poked it forward. Jared will go to his left. And he's still on the ground. He was in danger. He just farmed it out. Here's Shattuck. Oh, straight with the hand pass. McCade drives it in long. Looking for McKenzie again. And Obst came over the top, almost able to mark it. Gowans, Chris was clever. McKenzie kicks his second in a minute. Well, that is something special there. You saw Gowans just hit the front of the pack. He originally tried to go off the ground, but landed back in his arms and had nowhere to go. But uh, here it is here, big contest. Tried to go off the ground, back in his hands, and very clever. Just. A ground ball, handball, straight to McKenzie. And he don't make a mistake from 10 metres out, straight in front. Seven inside 50s to centrals. Eagles 13. So Eagles had a, certainly an enormous amount of the, the ball. And a fair few more scoring opportunities and only 10 points up. Amazing that the Eagles that appear to have had the ball on so many occasions and a little bit lopsided, if you'd like, but... The dogs go forward and kick a couple of quick goals and it's back to 10 points. Amazing. Big group of players around this football. Treby, another possession for him. Steinburner seems to be going okay with that shoulder. Wilson left it for James Gowans. Ball kicked off the ground. Grokey, beware. Ware's got a bit of pace. Off to Hyde. Oh, handball is dangerous to Graham. Off to Hyde. Has to clean it up. And James Gowans couldn't get on the end of it. And there's a bit of frustration. A nasty look from James Gowans. And oh, goodness me, he's having a crack at the umpire. Strange that, Michael. He's Strange. talking to the umpire. Oh, I think he's just for money. So let's reckon he's letting him know that uh, perhaps he thought he was manhandled on a couple of occasions. They give you good value for money, both of them. Treby is working overtime. Lindsay, with his non preferred right boots, kicked the high ball. Off the hide, went without it. Working hard, pass it off. Got a pack of dogs around him. And a ball up. Now the Eagles are in this ball up will probably try to get three or four players sitting wide of the pack or sitting out behind the pack to set up a wall. Okay, Central's get the footy. Shattuck got through. And the minor score. So just extending that margin to 11 points, the Eagles. 27 and a half minute mark, drawing a close to the opening turn. Westhoff at half back. One of the emerging young dogs, reserves best and fairest last year. And McCabe's going to have to do his best elusive work to get out of this one. And he's up to the task. Got himself down with a kick. James Gowans was there. Elijah Ware attacking him, Jared. Officer, read perfectly by McKenzie. Earl shares it with Redden. Redden's kick, not good. James Gowans off the ball. Ware goes over. James Gowans normally pinpoint. Has his brother in short. You know he'll use him if he's in space. This is Chris. Kicks it long. Hoping for McKenzie, the man of the moment. Up goes the pack. Well taken by Colville. We'll get a free kick for being pushed in the back. Advantage rule paid. Powell. His kick out to Trevi. Oh, just one hander. Thanks very much. At half back, got it on the string. treve has been outstanding in this first term. Yes, he has, Michael. Three kicks, three handballs as well. Through the middle of the ground and up for it. Pasador takes the mark. He's right on the paint of 50. Good delivery. There's no doubt about that. Beautiful delivery. And there's a lot of space in that forward line. They seem to uh, work well together, Pasador and Grokey. Eagles forward line's been quite quite well positioned at this point in time. The Eagles play down. We'll go down to the boys in a moment as Passador threads through his second of this Anzac Day clash. 
And it looks like Redden's the man who's down there. And Mark Passador's got a couple, and the Eagles backed out to a 17-point lead. This is how it happened. Just a little clip there across the top of the head. Got somebody's legs, but uh, I think he'll be all right. That's, that's Gavin said, Colville, boys. Uh, Dennis Redden actually got a clip in the ribs across here in the wing, and uh, I think he went down to another contest and uh, ended up on the ground after that one. So a couple of knocks he took there. Well, the Eagles still in control. 17 points the margin. Schooler got rid of Lindsay off to Officer, had spent it before he actually took possession. Still in dispute. Wilson over it. Picked up by Potter. And still all in dispute. It's rugged in the clinches, as you'd expect. No doubt about that. It's been a, a real arm wrestle. I reckon that uh, the Eagles and Ronnie Full would be pretty happy quarter time. West off up, knocks it forward. Ware was good. Off the Slade, wants to straighten, can kick a goal. Matthew Slade, touched on the line. Well done by Joey Pedler. Consummate defender. Good work by Pedler on the line, Rob. There's no doubt about that. You ask your defenders to put in the, the extra effort to save that goal. Powell got a free kick, advantage rule was paid, Lindsay kicks forward, too hard for Thomas, taken by Westbrook, he just kicks it high, he's hoping for a mark, they go back, but a good mark taken by Octahyde right on the siren, as the Eagles were surging forward in this Anzac Day clash, a sensational first quarter, at quarter time, at the Adelaide Oval, look at the view. The Eagles, 5-6-36, lead Central District by 16 points, 3-2-20. So we look through there, Timmy Pfeiffer and, uh, oh, well, they just get to know each other. Joey Pedler couldn't resist. James Gowan's reacting and just a little bit of push and shove. And Tim Pfeiffer, the umpire, having a talk to the Gowan's boys as we go through the opening term and it started with a little bit of a worry for Nathan Steinbrenner his first kick as skipper just grabbing on that shoulder that was reconstructed in the offseason. I've had some experience with that uh, Clay Sampson had a similar type of injury and sometimes they can just get their shoulder in the wrong position and it, it pops out and then pops back in so uh, it's, it's good to see with this continued play. Well the dogs look good early although Eagles obviously had that shot on goal with Pasador that he missed but uh, they took over the Eagles in the middle stages of the quarter. They've had plenty of the ball, the Eagles. You can see that beautiful running goal from Treby's uh, damaging left footer. There's no doubt that uh, the Eagles have had plenty of the ball. They've been pretty good inside um, their forward 50. I think they're very well structured with their three tools there. And if they can get the ball in quickly to them, I reckon they'll, they'll believe they'll be able to outscore the Eagles. Brokey and Oakley have certainly added something up forward, as you said, with their tall structure. They've, they've taken those two boys from North Adelaide and turned them into something, and it's been handy to have the odd 2002 AFL Premiership player and Aaron Shattuck up forward and across the middle as well. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. He's a class act. He's another one of the tools, just getting a bit of space. Mark Passador, that was a beautiful kick, that one. About 50 metres straight, straight through the middle there. The goal up I didn't need to, uh, didn't need to move. So at the 22 minute mark of the quarter, the margin was 22 points and we're thinking, well, last year it was 74 in favour of the Eagles and they looked well in control and then Big Buckets McKenzie stepped up to uh, sneak one home and then brilliant work this from Chris Gowans, awareness, reflexes, you name it. That was just the class act that was and that, that, that was a sign of an experienced player there just dishing that ball underneath the uh, hands of the opponent. So a couple of goals to McKenzie kicking those keeps the dogs in it 16 points it is at quarter time mark Passador with a couple for the eagles and through the stats what do you make of them well i reckon that the, the interesting things the inside 50s there you can see that the eagles have had 16 compared to bulldogs have only really had nine so that that clearly shows to me that there's a, a dominance in terms of the amount of ball the eagles are getting I guess it also shows the efficiency, though, of the dogs. They have found a way forward, there's no doubt about that. They haven't had many forward entries, but at least hey, they score when they get there. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, and they've, they've used a couple of their experienced heads. We, we spoke about McKenzie and Gowns that have um, really helped them in that area. Down to Sodas now. He's been listening to what's been going on in the Central's huddle. 
Yeah, Roy Laird's uh, not really getting out of control. Probably very disappointed in the way that uh, they've got into this game. A few goals down. I think the problem was that he's found is their delivery in the forward line has been pretty ordinary. He's just uh, a little concerned that they were blazing away at times. He wanted them to be a little smarter, a little more careful with their particular skills. Now, uh, Lee Treby's causing some concern for Central Districts, just sitting out in the wing, moving out a little bit. Both the Gowans boys have uh, spent some time with Roy Laird in that huddle, just saying that we need to keep an eye on him because he is dragging us away. Luke McCabe may have some uh, attention for Treby in this second term. Nathan Steinburner, the skipper, we did see that uh, shoulder looked a little bit tender just as he was trying to break the tackle early in the game. He has had the, the strapping looked at by the medical staff. He looks okay and he's keen to stay there. Thanks, so this is James Gowans, one of the important players. In fact, both the Gowans are, let's face it, and often get mistaken for each other. But uh, James Gowans particularly important this afternoon and he's been good and efficient and we've already talked about Chris's little handball that set up McKenzie's goal. Yeah, there's no doubt. And both of them look for each other. I think we, we utilise that in the commentary. And I reckon here's the passage of play where if they, they spot each other up, they certainly get it, bring each other into the game. And there's no doubt that those two are the engine room of uh, Central Districts. There's interesting comments there from Sodas about what Roy Laird was saying. Once they do get to the 50, they're OK. But, of course, their delivery has been poor through the middle of the ground just at the moment. Benny Knights has been listening intently to the Eagles. <laughs> Very intently down here, Neil. Um, Look, the Eagles, just no panic whatsoever. They're very calm, controlled. They're broken up into their forwards, backs, centre-line players. Uh, Rick McGowan and Luke Norman having a chat there. There's two specialist coaches. And then Ron Fuller came in and said, look, boys, come on together, come in. No rush, no panic. Everyone's very calm, controlled, and uh, and basically said he's very happy with the start they've made. He's, the forward line, I think, is working very well. The structure's up there. The on-ball is working very hard, and, and he's really happy about their clearances from the stoppages. So, at the moment, no panic in the Eagles, and why would they be? They've started very well. Certainly have nights here, and they'd be they'd be happy with that lead, I'm sure. There's no doubt about that. And you can see there that uh, Justin Sicilella was having a chat to Ronnie Fuller, obviously explaining a couple of things that were happening in the midfield. There he is. There, I think that they're mopping up really well across half back. They've had guys like uh, Luke Jarrett that uh, sort of comes off the wing and, and sweeps across the back there. And that, and we've already spoke about their their midfielders playing inside. And then when they go inside forward 50, they've been quite potent potent in terms of their tools. Interesting recruit, Luke Jarrett. He Spent, a, uh, spent some years at Williamstown, did, did two pre-seasons, 2004-2005 at Collingwood, then wrote an email apparently to the SANFL club saying, anybody want me? And the Eagles have picked him up. Oh, he's been a fantastic recruit. He's a real jack in the box. He's got a, a beautiful long stride. He's quick and he's got a thump and left foot kick. So no doubt uh, the Eagles will be pretty happy with, with his uh, performance so far. Former Central's midfielder there and Ricky McGowan doing some talking. McGowan's boys, as we said, very important. Are they slowing down at all? You wonder, don't you? Well, uh, look, I, I don't think it matters with those those guys because <laughs> the ball magnets are fantastic in terms of their skill quick, execution. Quick. And, uh, they bring other players, quicker players, into the game if they can get their hands on the ball. And Knights, he's with that man we just mentioned, Ricky McGowan. Certainly, and Rick, a good start out of the centre line. A lot of pressure on Paul Lindsay today on his own. Oh, yeah, there certainly is. But Grokey's uh, quite capable in the ruck, so I'm sure we'll get a contest there. And happy with the way, you know, the clearance is coming out of there. A lot of fast movement down to the forward, so you seem to be working well as well at the moment. Oh, certainly. I mean, this has been by far... But the last three weeks has been pretty ordinary, but they're certainly intense and in getting first use of ball, which is good. Thanks a lot, Rick. And up to Michael Maney for the second quarter. That's a good get, Ben Knights. Well done. Second term underway. 16-point lead to the Eagles. Wigley tries to burst through. Somehow got it to Shattuck. Jared, just a fumble, can't afford that. Westhoff got the handle, used McKenzie, kicked a couple of goals in the first quarter, was useful. Well done, Colville, just working off officer. Takes the mark. Powell loves to mop up, he too, and McKenzie. Luke Jarrett, the man we spoke about a few moments ago, what a well-weighted kick finds Treby, another left footer. The kick is a beauty to McKenzie, who's drifted forward. Passador gave the lead, decided to go to Grokey, and he's got it. Adam Grokey had a bit of good work behind by Oakley to leave that path clear for Grokey to take them up. They're good at that, the Eagles. They've There's done that well today. There's no doubt about that, Michael. They're working as a team, and the, the three tools in Passador and Oakley are, have done a number of quick shepherds. You can see McKenzie put the ball by there, just a shepherd out the back and Oakley's been good enough. They're, they're causing a, a lot of problems at the moment. A few headaches for Roy Laird, they're three tools. 
This to take it out to 22 points. Adam Grokey got a good shot of this. Splits the middle. And the Eagles get the first goal of the second term. Well, the ball originated from uh, the half-back line. Luke Jarrett had, hot, had the footy. He's a left footer, he kicked it inboard, and he found another left footer, he then got it to McKenzie, and then McKenzie's hit the hot spot again. So, good play, Eagles. Very efficient. Been very happy with their performance thus far. 22 points to better. Oh, Central District coming off their worst loss since 1992. They lost in the last round to Glenelg by 95 points. So, maybe confidence taking a little battering at Central's, although after three premierships in a row, you'd think they'd be in pretty good nick. Sicalella. Down to Earl, trapped it well, trapped immediately by Thomas, eventually got it out of there. Umpire has spotted a free kick in the back, Chris Gowans. Straight out the back to Ware. Oof. Ware says, well, I shouldn't have probably called for that. Spreads it wide, looking for Wilson. Shattuck came, put pressure on him. Wilson was able to take the mark. Now as he looks up, nothing much. He's been called to play on. He's got a handball option off the height. Off the height, takes his time. Nothing on offer, so he belts it long. Diving across there, Redden, play on, called the umpire, correctly so, Redden dropped the mark, now it's trapped, Potter doing the tackling for the Eagles, and McCabe just wouldn't surrender the ball. The Eagles are not allowing any space whatsoever, as soon as the central player gets hold of the footy, they're pretty quick to lay the tackle. Wigley, taken to ground by Slade, rolls in under Wigley again, can you blame him? No, says the umpire. The call, get it out, get it out. And usually, if the ball's trapped under the play, he's in a lot of trouble. Ball knocked forward again for Centrals. Wigley got, or maybe it was Potter got in the way. That was in the back. Jared, it might have been, got into the back of his opponent. Uh, Sullivan, who will take the free kick. Chris Gowan's moving through the middle for him. He decides to go for. A longer option to Schooler. Backing in was Colville. Crunch came to Sibinela. Kick forward. And in the middle of two was Redden. In the middle of two central players was Redden. Powell with the diving mark. And that was brave from Colville. And he's hurting a bit back in the middle of the ground after that collision. Shattuck at half back for the Eagles. Thought about using Powell again. Umpire Rouston says. You need to get rid of it. Targets Lindsay. In there also Westbrook. And I think that may have come off the boot of off the height. And out of bounds on the full. Unlucky. Free kick to the Eagles. It's just off the boot or the boot. I don't know. Let's look at this super, super, super slow, slow, slow mo replay. Shattuck has got to use Westbrook. And he's just away. Gets dealt with. No free kick. There you go. Up the way by off the height. Lindsay taking the ground by O'Sullivan. Is he laying on it? No. Umpire Pfeiffer. Ball up. Four and a half minutes gone. Eagles by 22. First goal of the second turn to Grokey. Reagan, Lindsay conned him. Then he went to ground with the arms free and decided I better not release it. There's too many dogs around. <laughs> too many dogs off the leash. Trickles out of bounds again. Good Anzac Day clash. There's off the height who's been important for them. He's Played pretty well, Jeremy, off the height of down back. It's been down there a bit. Coming up at half time, some grand final highlights from last year. Pretty good grand final it was too. Stay tuned for that. One man who didn't play in that game was O'Sullivan, who knocks it to the line. Five minutes gone, Eagles by 22. The Eagles have pretty much only got the three tools inside forward 50, so they're trying to expose those plays have done the job so far. They haven't got any smalls in there at the moment. Wilson, unlikely Ruckman, Gowans, met full on. In goes Potter. He's laying on the football and a quick whistle by the umpire saved him. Ball up right in front of the interchange bench. Our men on the boundary, Mark Soderstrom and Ben Knights would have a lovely view of this as Lindsay Knocks it down. Big pack of players forming. Play going nowhere. Just reached a bit of a stalemate here at the moment, Rob. Probably like the first five or ten minutes of the first quarter. It was um, very much a uh, stoppage type of game. Whoever wins the stoppages tends to get the ball inside the forward 50, but there tend to be a lot of stoppages. 
Shattuck just showing his class inside that stoppage. And I think maybe the sun got in Grokey's eyes just then. But just a change down there, 90. Bit of trouble there for one of the Eagles. Yeah, it's, it certainly is. Potter uh, got absolutely crunched here. Uh, now it was before that, I think. And uh, he got crunched and got a massive cork in the back of the knee or the top of the calf there. So he's just having a look at that and getting the doctors to uh, assess it. Um, Toad forward, it might have been by Treby. Steinburner going back. Now he's over the ball or over Eagles' opponent. A lot of bravery shown by Nathan Steinburner. I'm sure he hurt that shoulder early. Speaking of hurt, have a look at Potter. Just getting an assessment on what he's done to his knee or his shin by the looks. Graham taken in the tackle, released it to O'Sullivan. Broke away nicely. The former Werribee player drives it out to the centre wing. Colville did well, got rid of his man and officer who came again just down the line. Happy to do that. Powell, happy to be bundled across the line. Umpire Colin Rouston calling for the throw-in. The Eagles certainly played the percentages. You can see there that the ball was close to the line. They're quite happy to take the ball over the boundary line and start again. They've got a very good stoppage team, so I suppose they say, why wouldn't we? Exactly right, Rob. Special comments by Robert Pyman, the coach of South Adelaide in the SNFL. Good work by the Eagles. Inkster, who got it from Earl. The drifting back is McKenzie. Played pretty well today, McKenzie. Kicked a couple of goals to McCabe. We know he's a big game player. Well, they'll let you down every time. Taken by Shattuck. He can run right in Shattuck. He can draw the man over the top. He decides to stop, prop, and pop it through. He's got two. Just too easy, the Eagles, no pressure. No doubt about that, he just uh, picked that switch of play from McCabe in the centre of the ground. Here it is here, looking for the central player. Picked it off nicely, three or four bounces. A little bit of confusion there, was he going to shepherd or was he going to peel off of the handball? But just slotted it through, easy as pie. Aaron Shattuck, together with Luke Powell, the main ball getters on the ground with eight kicks and three handballs each. Well, the physio's just had a quick look at Ryan Potter's knee, boys. You can see him warming up down here on the bench. He's uh, been cleared by the physio of no knee injuries. It's a knock to the back of the knee above the calf there. Now, you heard Tim Pfeiffer say, don't look, not looking at the ball, but both Ruckman missed each other, and I thought both of them weren't looking at the ball. Downfield is a free kick. No, yes, and finally it'll go to the Eagles inside the 50. And that player behind might have been Powell or was it Westbrook who caught one high and late. And now there's a little bit of push and shove with McKenzie. Pass it all meanwhile has the mark. And from perhaps 45 metres, he'll kick on a 45-degree angle. And the boys getting a little interested in knowing what each other is doing perhaps after the game. Nice kick by Pasador. And Pasador has three for the afternoon, and the margin is 34 points in favour of the Eagles. You can see here, Yvonne was paid. Pasador's got a heap of room up there. He's one of the most, or the quickest player in perhaps the Eagles forward line out of their tools, especially. Plenty of space, just kick the ball out in front. He's got his kicking boot back on after that early miss. He's, he's a lovely shot from outside 50. But once again, it came back to the centre bounce clearance. The Eagles got the free kick. They utilised it well. Three unanswered goals in this turn by the Eagles. In goes Wilson. Tough stuff. Taken to ground was McKay. Ware put his body on the line. James Gowans. O'Sullivan. All slipped over at the crucial time. Good enough to get a handball back to James Gowans who uses Thomas, his handball's not good to Slade. In goes Lindsay. They are committed this afternoon in this Anzac Day clash. The Eagles, they desperately want to win this. The Eagles are pumped up. The next five minutes is a really danger period for Central Districts because the Eagles can just sniff that they can get another one or two that the game might be out of reach of the Doggies. Centrals under pressure. Been whopped by 95 last week against the Bays. And they're staring down a five-goal deficit at the moment. And they need to find something right now. Michael, it's worth keeping an eye on Lee Treby, the man whose prized possession, his favourite thing in the world, is his purple falcon ute. Now, he's picking off both the Gowans boys. There could be some fireworks a little later on. Struggled for a car parking spot, they tell me, before the game. Treby, the love machine. Powell, 
looking for Mackenzie. Colwell under a bit of pressure, got the kick away. Mackenzie, a real high floater, and he dropped the sitter. In cricketing terms? Certainly did. And Lindsay's not taking all of the ruck work. You can see every now and then he'll switch. Mackenzie's now doing the ruck work with Brokey, and Lindsay pushes to uh, centre half forward or full forward. Just giving him a spell in the middle of the quarter. Off the play, Sikalella a free kick. James Gowans, the offender, just pushing him away. And now he's gone over the ground. He's going to give away 25 any second, I reckon he is. There you go. I could hear Colin Ralston saying back a metre, back a metre, and he was going forward half a metre. So, here you go. Oh, well, you can hear yeah, Colin Ralston there. How many chances? Experienced umpire, Colin Ralston. Back a metre, I see that was... Now, inside 50, lets himself down. Wilson takes one and then two grabs and then possession of the ball. A little bit of quite relief, comic relief this afternoon from... Umpire Ralston and James Gowans. I think Chris actually record of getting more McGarry medal rights than James. Often see one. Okay, eventually kicking down the line looking for Wilson. Good mark. Oh, and then chose to play on and he was surrounded. Got away with it, fortunately. Now Steinburner from centre wing will try and use his pace. He's restricted, has to kick high to half forward. Brooks, nice mark coming over the bat. Obst gave him a couple of options and then decided to pull up. Now he leads again. Brooks from outside 50 just props it up. Obst going back, couldn't take it. And finally a three for the minor score. Sort of a bit of, bit of one more the other from Brooks. Then. Couldn't make up his mind what to do. Not a noted goal kicker, Stephen Brooks. To the quick look through. Not only did he snag one in his career, so he might have it a go. Spencer's kick is a shocker, but I think he might get it back. The umpire had called time on. Central's first score of the quarter has taken 13 minutes, and look at those inside 50s, 22 to 11 in favour of the Eagles. Amazing stat, Neil. They look pretty ordinary at times. The Dogs. Francis to wear through the middle and that's a good kick to Obst who got a note from Redden and got a free kick all over the shoulder advantage all played goes to Westhoff who loads up a long kick can McKenzie get there he's touched off the boots in any case and it rolls through for behind the last two forward 50 entries from the doggies have been caused by the fact that they've been willing to play on and move the ball a bit quicker as soon as they do that the game might open up for them it's going to have to try to move the ball a little quicker at this point in time it's going to have to open up quite a bit though too, isn't it? 32 point margin, halfway through the second term. Sorry, Pedler. Small town of Cummins. The ball in centre wing in front of the Victor Richardson gates on the far side of the Adelaide Oval. Plenty of secondary jumpers in there. Came out to school though, went the hand pass over the top for Slay. Sikolela. Made the tackle, robbed Slade, went down to half forwards. Thomas will come across and you'd think he'd get Brokey, he does. Bullets in the ground and we'll get a ball up. Nice work by Sikalella across centre wing. Just made an observation before, Neil, in regards to the stats. That's the glaring stat at the moment. The inside 50s is almost double in favour of the Eagles. But really across the board, the kicks are very similar. The handballs are very similar. And uh, the same with the marks. So it just shows the Eagles are much more efficient at getting the ball inside 50. And around these stoppages, they just seem to be getting a better share of it. Ball down towards half forward. Again, they just weren't efficient. Problems though, Central's putting on the pressure. Graham was taken high, he'll get the free kick. Central's fans say it's about time. And he gets 25 as well, and Central's fans say it's about time. Well, Linkster's asking the question here, what, what was that for? We'll see on the replay here. Uh, just slightly over the shoulder. And perhaps Linkster failing to let him up, but it's only a 25 metre penalty. Graham in his 100th. SANFL game, kicks from 50, he's a thumping kick, and it's a straight kick as well. So the Dogs get one back. There's no doubt they needed that, the Doggies. 
take the 25 me metres any time. You can see here, Inkster's arm just getting over it. the left shoulder there of Graham. Probably didn't let him up, I think. Yeah, is that that pretty uh, interpretation? May, may well be. Can't see much else in it. He's just holding on to his shirt there. That's, that's pretty hot, that call. But uh, beautiful kick. And at the end of the day, Central's, even though they, they're not playing as well as they would like, they're only four goals down. Yeah, it's amazing. Another goal here, and they're well back in it. O'Sullivan can't get through. Ball up. Michael Roy Laird just swinging a change in the midfield. Matty Slade, who is in fact the leading goal kicker for Central this year with the six. He's come off the ground. He's been replaced by youngster Scotty Dutchke, who's recovered from that knock in the opening quarter. And with the Eagles, we just saw Adam Spencer come up there after uh, giving up a couple of footies, and Tom Woodley's gone and replaced him. Thanks, Ben. Awkward bounce at the back. Steinburner needs to do his best work. Slick. Sibonala. McCabe looks to wear. And a little helicopter, but it got there. Where wants to kick it long and hope for a Mackenzie Mark. Over the top, the other Mackenzie Mark from the Eagles. Westhoff can't break the tackle. Was held in. Ball up at half forward, about 45 from the Central's goal. Very evident that uh, the Eagles have come to play today. They're doing all the 1% of things. You see Mackenzie there and then Colville laying a beautiful tackle. The one percenters will count in this Anzac Day clash as they will on any day. Sikalela couldn't quite get through. Big pack of players around the football. And this is how the Dogs will try and jam it up a bit, not to let the Eagles have that free flow. Mackenzie looking for O'Sullivan. In goes Jackman, the young man. Dutchkey, he is well recovered. And play going nowhere. 18 minutes gone. 28 plays 54, the Eagles doing well. 18 minutes into the second quarter and the Gowers twins have only had two kicks each. They can change very quickly. Powell uses Shattuck. Good kick by Jackman. High, Sibanala. Good thump away by Oakley, whose recovery and ability to be able to lock it in. That's where they fight so hard, the Eagles, to keep that ball in the vicinity. It's interesting. Uh, I'd like to see the, the uh, stats on the clearances, but if you just have a look at the hitouts, Centrals are actually dominating the hitouts 20 to 9. So I would say, though, that the Eagles are picking off the uh, Centrals Ruckman at the moment. O'Sullivan, close to the ground, does well, got one high, hard to miss his head if you're a taller player. He is quite short. Benefit of the free kick can come this side to Elijah Ware, getting plenty of it on this side of the ground. Question is his usage. This time it's good. James Gowans inside 50 can go. Oh dear, dangerous kick. Ware wrote it brilliantly. The goals open up for him. Central's have another one. Oh, here they come. Well, we mentioned it a couple of minutes ago that um, if Central's can get one more, they're right back in the game. There's no doubt they're back in the game at the moment and they're playing it very well. Stoppage after stoppage, slowing the game down. You see where there, beautiful crumb. That's his second goal. He's a class act, this kid. If he gets a, if he gets a lot of the footy around the uh, forward 50 or centre forward, it's going to spell trouble for the Eagles. Six kicks this quarter for Elijah. We're 11 possessions for the game. And he gets them where they count too. He gets them and hurts you up forward. No doubt, he's a beautiful finisher of the, of the play. Treby, crash. In the middle, met that man we spoke about just a second ago in Ware. Another bounce in the middle. And interesting that that, uh, that ruck situation, Rob Ware, a lot of teams read off Lindsay a lot of the time. And, and he's very predictable where he taps. It's working the reverse today a bit. Well, we've seen that happen in the grand final, I reckon, mm. a few years ago, where Central just picked him off every single time. Exactly. Sikalela. Tries to keep it in front of him. A couple of efforts, good. Treby, outstanding today. Put the kick. Wilson with the flight. That's a terrific mark by Wilson. Courage plus. Looks like a 25 metre penalty. The Westbrook just holding on. Wilson, what a mark. Let's take take a some seven, courage. Take Sorry. seven marks today. Most of them difficult ones like that. Ben Mogridge on stats for us this afternoon. Where is the target? And Treby got a lot of it. An umpire, Rouston, is he going to change his mind? No, he's not. He's going to pay it to Treby. 
probably a fair call. I think he had a, a fair bit of it. The question is, he hold on to it long enough, Rob? Well, the umpire's out there, so we'll give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. Has that sitting on the fence? Uh, spoken by a true coach. And if you're coach, you'll be happy with that kick from Redden. It goes straight to Chris Gowans to McKenzie. A couple of kicks out from goal, big Jason McKenzie. He's got Graham in short, and he'll probably have a shot for goal before he kicked one not too long ago at the 16-minute mark. He's just laid it off. Long kick by Graham the beauty. I just looked away for a split second, and it's floating through. Well, he probably thought he was outside of his distance just. I, I thought he would have gone back and had a shot, but uh, decided to take on the opposition player. Turnover in the middle of the ground. Gowan's here to McKenzie. McKenzie holds it up. There's nothing up forward. Goes short. Graham. I just think he might catch him off guard. Plays on. Uses his momentum and uh, kicks around the corner. Kick a beautiful goal. 14 well, points. Game on. There's 34 points at the nine minute mark, and now we're at the 22 minute mark, and it's 14. And umpire not happy with his bounce, he'll bring it back as you were, boys. Retire outside the center square if you're at half forward or half back. And that would be Stutschke, and he looks like he's struggling with that hip problem. So ball up again. This time it'll be thrown. Find the Eagles through Shattuck, just dribble it out of there. Steinburner in control, he wants it. Oh, so did Sibinella. Took it, broke, gave it to McCabe. Center wing, Wilson, left footer. In he comes, inboard nicely, down to half forward. Ill-directed, the ball will go out of bounds, and Colville just happy to see it out of bounds. Just right now, they want position, the Eagles, and hold up play. Wilson's been a bit of a spark for them, hasn't he? Played out, out of that. Courage and yeah. run. Playing him across the half-back line, and uh, he's got a lot of the footy. He's usually telling with his possessions too, Michael. Son of a club legend in Wilbur Wilson. Here's Shattuck breaking away through the middle. Wilson was the man who met him. The hand pass was errant, but he got away with it. Powell was taken down, and it'll come back. He gave the hand pass. In fact, it was Westbrook who gave the hand pass, and then he was met from the back by Steinburner. So Westbrook will take the free kick for the Eagles. Drives long to their twin towers up there. Central's plenty of numbers. Brooks kicked it over the head of McCabe and the old legs said, OK, carry me there. And McCabe picks it up in the back pocket. Cross goal, dangerous. No. Off the hide. Goes wide. Now they've created an overlap. Brooks at half back. Brooks can go over the top to James Gowans. He's in space. They won't chase him down, that's for sure. Gowan's approaching half forward, looks inside 50, goes for Graham. Graham, nice mark. And we know he's in range because he's done it twice already this quarter from that position. Tough angle to kick a goal, and I think the move has been made with Graham pushing forward, Sevenella going back, and no doubt that's caused a huge dilemma for the Eagles. Graham obviously needs to be on the run. That was an awful kick. Nicely done by Ops. Then he went back, he went back too far. Norsworthy can trap it. He goes further back to McCabe. He can center it up, he does so. And nice mark taken there. Running in from Francis. Francis taking his time. He'll want to pass it off, not confident at all. Goes for Obst oh, inside 50, almost took the one hand. And now McKenzie fed it off to Chris Gowans. Wants his left side. And smothered there nicely, Shattuck with desperation. Treaty came down straight into the shins of Chris Gowans. And now there's an all-out assault on the ball from both sides, 25 metres from goal. And just watch this, because it might develop. And a couple of players not happy with what happened. Justin Sicilella coming off just for a break on ball. And on goes the youngster, Matthew Jackman. Bit of a rotation down there. Lindsay knocked at the ground. Central's with another goal of make it interesting. Here's Norsworthy, sets it up and threads it. What a kick by Norsworthy under pressure. And they're back to within eight points. Well, the crowd's been brought back into the game, Michael, with uh, the last uh, five, ten minutes of play. Been a real resurgence from Central Districts. You can see there that uh, beautiful kick. The lovely kick, spillage, one or two steps, slots it straight through the middle. 
The Eagles are ringing the changes at the moment. They've got some dilemmas there in their back 50. Treby a little bit sick, sore and sorry for himself, I reckon, after that uh, collision. Lindsay didn't get up as high, but used his body well. Earl got it off to Powell, and then Shattuck, and then back to Earl. Off the right leg, inside 50. Goes for Passador. Passador! Those hands are just magnificent, and they're working well this afternoon. Thanks. The Eagles need this one. They just need a steadier at the moment. Brooks, the player on the mark. Passador has been very, very accurate this afternoon, which is setting him up for a minor score. I know as he comes in, starts it right, fades it back nicely. There's a goal. And a badly needed one just to relieve some of the pressure. Mark Passador's fourth of the afternoon. He has two in this quarter. Well, he's a beautiful kick. We've said it before, outside 50 or thereabouts. He doesn't let you down too often. And he's been the recipient of a couple of nice passes, but this one he had to earn. Brooks was uh, right on his backside. Couldn't quite get the fist in there. He's a strong, powerful man, Passador. He's kicked their last two goals, Mark Passador, at the 9 and 27 minute mark. But what a comeback by the Dogs. They were dead and buried halfway through this term. At the 16 minute mark, in fact, and Quentin Graham, a couple of goals at the 16, 22 minute mark. Elijah Ware and Norsworthy. They're still back in this contest, very close to half time. Norsworthy, who kicked their last goal. Wigley just hacks it forward. The race is on. Steinburner will want the line, and it'll go across at half forward for the Eagles. Another goal by the Eagles might just put a bit of a dent in that run of centrals. Good crowd in, just building ever so gradually. Waving away, Doggies fans. They'd like what they've seen in this second half of this second term. Lindsay just gets front position. Both Ruckman don't take it. Lindsay away to Shattuck. Just sets Treby a hard task and he just kept his nerve. Lee Treby kept his eye on the football. He's on the edge of his distance. He's a bit twitchy. Here he goes. Decides to give it everything. Lee Treby has carried the pack. No. Was within a millimetre of a goal. It's a thump and kick, isn't he? Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. See there, well, the umpire's in pretty good position to call that one. Pretty hard to call it from here, but he wasn't uh, too far away. What's the ball? What's the ball? Oh, Eagles by 15 points. Well, Slade wants to play on quickly. This side he's got off the hide in space. Plenty of space for off the hide. Breaks down towards half forward with his kick. Graham trying to get rid of his opponent. Ball to the front. Potter rode it well. Oh, fed off a good hand pass, and they get out of trouble. The Eagles center wing. Chris Gowans, well, he'll be angry he wasn't paid that mark, but he gets possession anyway. Off the wear, Gowans doing some shepherding of sorts. Good grab by Francis at half forward, looks up quickly, call to play on. Powell pressures him, cross centre he goes, looks for Wilson. Wilson on his left leg, he tapped it back to Schooler. Schooler kept the arms free nicely, but didn't hand pass it correctly. Now, Lindsay's going to be taken down, it comes out to Francis again. Oh dear, it's tough in there. Finally, Treby with position, clean position to Inkster. Haven't seen much of him. That'll be 25. No, it's, yeah, well, I reckon you should be able to cool play on in that situation. They had the flow, the Eagles. Inkster takes advantage of his 25 to Passador. And again, the hands reach out and just vice-like grab the ball. I reckon Passador would be pretty happy with his half forward flankers at the moment because he's got an enormous amount of space to lead into. They had the clear run of the play there. Inks, they had the footy in the middle of the ground. The Passador could have led where he wanted to inside full 50. Close to half time. 26 minute mark, it was eight points the difference. Now it's out to 15 and this could make it 21 and Mark Passador away to the right. Margin out to 16 points, close to half time. Well, I reckon Eagles fans were wanting to get the footy a little bit further out and, and a little tighter angle because uh, he kicks those ones, the ones you expect him to get in the centre of the corridor. He's missed the last two. Paul Thomas just jumps the fence, collects the footy down at that Bradman stand end at this magnificent venue, the Adelaide Oval. Thomas, the seasons with Essendon, chopped off by Treby. They get another opportunity. 
The Eagles, that is an absolute drilling pass by Trevi finds Jackman. Matt Jackman, outside 50. You'll want to get a rig along. We just ticked into 31 minutes. He's procrastinating. He just needs to hit it to the top of the square. Good long kick. Up they fly. No one can take the mark. Grokey tried to go off the ground. Big pack of players dive on the football. Still an opportunity for the Eagles. 31 and a half gone. I reckon Roy Laird will want his players just to bash this ball straight through and uh, concede a point here. We don't want to be given a, an easy goal at this stage of the game. See what happens. Powell. I'll try and take him to the line. Just stands up in the tackle and then goes to ground. Another ball up. Another inquiry by one of the Gowns twins. Just for a change. Ball down again. Oh, great snap over the shoulder. What's it like? Well, Grokey's turned up with it in the end. Jackman just snapped it over the shoulder. And Grokey from the toughest of angles. But if the breeze in a very interesting direction there from the flags behind, I think he has every chance. And as you can see, almost Gaelic football style. He's going to come in straight away, curl it around the corner. Oh, what a goal! Knew exactly what he was doing. No doubt about that, Neil. He, he had that sorted out in his own mind. As soon as he took the mark, he knew exactly what he was going to do. See here... Roy Laird to be pretty disappointed that they couldn't get that footy through for a point. Grokey had a couple of different options on, but he didn't want to pass it. Just opened up the face of the goals and kicked the ball around the corner. I reckon he might have done that once or twice before training. <laughs> now they practice them. Adam Grokey, a couple of goals in this quarter. He was down a little bit last week in their loss to Norwood, but he's been a good target along with Oakley. Win. In their win, I should say. <laughs> They should have lost. They should have lost, that's right. Powell kicks it high. This is a very long quarter, 33 minutes. No one can mark. Brooks tries to go through. Another late goal by the Eagles would thrust a dagger into the heart of the Dogs because they've worked so hard to get back. No doubt they have. They would have spent a lot of petrol tickets, I reckon, the Doggies to get back in this game. They'll be looking for the siren, have a breather for 20 minutes and then come back out. Couple having a bit of a dip there. Nathan Steinburner, was it, in amongst all of that? Throw the ball up in SNFL football. Grokey, Thomas, snagged it. Opportunity, last gasp for the Dogs. Gowans takes it. This is Chris. Graham working hard. He's got a bit of work to do here. McKenzie is cool under pressure to Pedler. And as the siren goes, Joey Pedler kicks it to the bleachers. It doesn't matter. It's half-time at the Adelaide Oval in this round four Anzac Day clash between Centrals and the Eagles. And the Eagles, 10-8-68. Central District, 7-4, 42.